Good morning to all of our Sioux Falls Christian families. We hope you and your family are enjoying a fun and, and a relaxing summer. At Sioux Falls Christian, we've been working diligently to create a reasonable and responsible plan for returning to our physical campus for the start of the school year on August 19. We're looking forward to welcoming you back as students and families to our school for a normal school year if possible. As a school, one of our goals each year is to build community. The traditional classroom model allows our teachers and students to be in the classroom together, devoted to instruction and learning, an activity engaged in growing together, both academically and spiritually. We believe this is where our community is best accomplished. It is our desire for our students and staff to be on campus this entire school year, actively engaged in curricular and co-curricular activities. We do appreciate your patience as we've worked on developing a comprehensive plan that accomplishes our shared desire to return to school in a normal setting, along with keeping our students and community as healthy as possible. Our aspiration, even in the uncertainty of what is ahead, is what we will strengthen our unity and testimony as the people of God called to this particular place, that we will equip each other and each child according to their distinct God-given giftedness and purpose, and that we will protect the most vulnerable among us. We do have students in our, and staff in our building each day that are immune compromised. Many of our families also have this same situation with a parent or a grandparent, an uncle or an aunt. As a neighbor-loving gesture and a neighbor-loving community, we want to do all we can to provide a safe learning and work environment for all of our students and staff and to help mitigate the spread to other loved ones. Given the fluidity of the situation we find ourselves in and have been in for the last five months, our plans to safely return to school in August will be constantly evaluated for necessary modifications. These plans embrace current recommendations for returning to school from the Center for Disease Control, the South Dakota Department of Health, and our local health department, along with recommendations from a medical team that we have formed within our school system. Please note that recommendations from each of these organizations will evolve between now and August 19, and we will be they will be taken into appropriate consideration which could result in changes to our reopening plan. This document outlines some of the procedures we plan to start the school year under, understanding that things may change. We do ask for your patience uh, with us as we continue to do what's best for our students and families and staff. Thank you. Well, thank you for joining me today, Kim. I've got uh, Kim Johnston, our elementary principal here, and we're just gonna have a little conversation about what the start of school is going to look like. We are happy that we're gonna invite our students and our staff and, and our families back on August 19. And uh, I know that's gonna be uh, a little different. We haven't been in school for five months, and uh, at the elementary level, uh, there's gonna be a few changes that we're going to have to do. Uh, to keep everyone safe. Our goal this year is to, to be in the seats all year long. Uh, our goal is to stay away from remote learning and uh, to do that we, uh, we have to take some measures to stay healthy. Um, we have vulnerable pe people in our school uh, health-wise and uh, we want to do everything we can to help that situation. So Kim, just give us a couple of highlights of what our elementary students are going to look a little different than normal as we start the school year. And we hope we don't have to stay in it long, but we, we don't know that, so. Sure. We've really been advised that it's uh, probably safest for everybody for kids to stay in cohorts. And so we've been looking at uh, what that means for us uh, throughout our day. Uh, for instance, uh, with specials, uh, the teachers that are typically uh, teaching those specials would instead be going into the classrooms instead of kids traveling you know, to and from to different locations. That's one of the ways that we've thought about that. Uh, with recess, uh, we would like to remain in those cohorts and so that would mean probably that kindergarten would have their own recess, uh, first grade would have their own recess, each grade level uh, cohort would have their own recess time. Um, so that we're not mixing those cohorts. Uh, the same thing, uh, we also we'd be thinking about uh, what we could do in, uh, at lunch. 
uh, to keep kids in cohorts as well and just maybe using every available space to spread out the most that we can um, at lunch. So mm -hmm. those are some of the things that we've been talking about. Yeah. So I know uh, your, your teaching staff too is, is about building community. I know they're missing students. This summer it was evident when we had drop-offs of, of supplies and we had a parade and um, you've been blessed with a lot of great staff members that I know are, are wanting to see their kids uh, back. Um, can you talk a little bit also on um, what is chapel going to look like if you have chapel? It might be a case we can't for a couple months, but if it does, do you have any idea what that might look like? You know, this spring uh, we just felt it was really important to have chapel. Chapel is part of, of what makes us peculiar and unique at mm -hmm. Sioux Falls Christian and just so very important to us. And so I'm sure that we'll be looking at some sort of virtual chapel um, experience similar to what we did in the spring, you know, until we're able to all be together again. Right, right. Um, at the elementary school, we do have a, a number of visitors that come on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Uh, can you give a little bit of an idea of what we're going to have to do again at the start of this year um, just for the safety of all as far as visitors are concerned? We love visitors. We love volunteers. We love seeing parents and grandparents. Um, but for this time right now, we may need to uh, limit the number of adults that we have coming in and out of our building. So it might mean that we have to place a table outside of the office where parents, if kids forget tennies or something, they can drop those things off and it's just something we might have to do right now um, until you know we have a more stable um, stable health environment right. at school right yeah that's kind of a, a tough thing for us because we want to build community um, it's important to us and our parents are an important part of that community but, uh, but then when we have to limit that that's not something we want to do but it's no. something we've been advised we should do yeah um, we've been in contact with a lot of agencies and a lot of schools and uh, there's a lot of people making decisions like that so anything else you want to add Kim to to our elementary uh, parents and, and our students at this time yeah I guess I've just really been thinking about the social emotional um, need that we have just a lot of uh, kids that have to feel a little bit concerned or emotional about um, about all that's been going on and I just want parents to know that we absolutely want to partner with them for kids that are feeling uneasy, uh, we just know that relationship building right now is going to be one of the biggest things. Mm -hmm. We just really want to um, build relationships uh, with kids and do everything that we can um, and also be teaching them about healthy habits, hand washing. Um, we're going to have to talk a little bit about social distancing, about covering our sneezes and our coughs and all of that kind of thing. And teachers have always been good at that and it'll just be right at the forefront um, of what we're thinking about as well. All right. Well, thank you for all your work you've done this summer to help us get to this point. And this, this document will be ever-changing. Yes. And we're going to make sure we communicate that with our parents. So thank you very much, Kim. Thank you.